here today to uh, talk about the DMX 20 OM and we're going to show you a couple different ways to set this on an air table and to get the best vibration set up uh, for your system. So what I'd like to do is uh, this is one configuration of the system and we have our cryostat and this is your interface. This is your instrumentation port and what we have here are these uh, are little vibration dampeners that we installed here depending on what your application is will depend on how uh, critical uh, our vibration has to be uh, so this is one way of setting up the system and I just wanted to explain uh, about these dampeners and then also attaching it down to the breadboard most of your breadboards are quarter 20 so we usually have some uh, stainless steel socket head cap screws and the way our flange is designed is to actually mount on the breadboard. So what we normally do is we'll tighten these screws in hand tight first and then back them up with the uh, Allen key. So what I like to do is I, I snug them all the way around and then go from one side to the other side as you're tightening them till they come to a full tight. Uh, Using the Allen key will eliminate putting too much torque because you don't want to end up stripping the threads and then you won't be able to get it out. So by using this, you know, just that it's, you could actually feel the tension and you're pretty much bottomed out. So that would probably be the best thing. The other thing is they do online, you can get a torque spec for that specific screw or machine screw and it actually give you a torque spec and if you want to use a calibrated, uh, ratchet torque uh, system uh, you can easily do that and actually tighten them to the expected torque what I like to point out on this particular system is the standoffs that actually come with the system uh, when we ship it to you it'll come complete with the standoffs on here holding your cryostat and your interface together. Once you get the system and bolt it to the um, breadboard, then what you do is you set up the stand to isolate your cryostat from your interface. And at that point, once you put the uh, stand together, the stand will hold the cryostat and it's a floor model. And then what will happen is you line everything up and then these will be the last things that you take out. So you remove these and then uh, we'll set up the stand and then do the charge vent, hook up the flex lines to the uh, compressor and the run cord and get ready, get it all set up for uh, running the system. Uh, what we're going to do is actually uh, set the stand in relationship to the air table, uh, the fork here goes on the top side of the cryostat to separate the cryostat, like I said, to the interface. This is the cryostat, so the forks go on to the top of the cryostat, and you have the interface bolted down to your breadboard, which is on this side. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to move this fork closer in where we have four quarter 20 screws on the side of the cryostat. So we're going to fasten the screws to this for stability and then what we're going to do is these here are in millimeters so these are five millimeter screws which we're going to actually once we get this set up properly we'll finish tightening these screws. We're going to just leave them a little loose so we can line up the holes properly on the square flange. So we're going to start sliding the fork in to line it up correctly. Uh, what you can do is you can take a sharpie. okay? and just put a mark lined up with the hole just on the top so you could actually center the hole when you're pushing it in to line up correctly with the threads. So then we're going to put our quarter 20 by one inch screws into the side of the flange to fasten the fork to the cross that. There's a total of four. So I recommend you put them in hand tight so that way then you don't end up crossing the threads. And this is a 3 16 Allen key that you're going to use to tighten it down. Finishing tighten quarter 20 screws to the interface. 
So you want to go around and make sure that they're nice and tight. Uh, make sure your height's good. It takes a little bit of time. Then what I would do then is go ahead and screw these down tight to your stand once you have it all set up. So you want to snug them down, make sure they're tight. So then at this point what we're going to do then is you want to make sure that you maintain the distance between the two flat surfaces here. So right where the standoffs are, we want to maintain like 1.62 inches to 1.75 inches in between. If you go above 1.75 inches, you're going to actually move the cries that upper inside the annular space and that's going to actually change your temperature on your sample. So for optimum temperature you want to maintain the same distance of what the standoffs are to give you the best temperature of your system. So at this point now, once you have the stand tight, your forks are tight, and you're tight against your crust, that at this point what we'll do is we'll actually remove your standoffs. And just take your time. Because what you don't want to do is cross thread any of the threads or you're going to run into more problems. So, loosen up all your standoffs. Okay, so you just want to pull that up, pull your standoff off. And just go right around. Remove your standoff. So this way now you're already set at the proper height for running your system. So once you have that done, then what that does is what the next step will be charge and vent across that for the angular space. And now your height is fixed and set. They're also fastened to the breadboard. Once you get it set up, you just want to make sure that each flange is parallel with each other because if for some reason the stand shifted a little bit, you can end up with a short, a thermal short inside the angular space. So I'd recommend a straight edge or you could take one of these uh, six inch rules and just lay it against the flat edge and match it up to the top to make sure that it's parallel. Uh, this here, I mean, makes it a little bit more difficult, but you could actually do it and just check and see where you're at with your mark. But you could go to the left or right and also just go around the whole thing and make sure that everything is parallel to each other. That one, that's why that'll actually get you the best setup for the uh, test. Right, the other thing what I want to show you before you hook your hoses up, your run cord, anything electrically, uh, what you could do with the voltmeter is actually you could set it to the um, ohm. And for this uh, voltmeter, this here has uh, an alarm on it. So if you take your two things, it will have an audible. That means you got contact. So what you can do to make sure that everything is fit up correctly with your stand, your cryostat, and your interface. And take one probe, attach it to the top. You go like this to the top of your cryostat where it's separated with the bellows to this part. And you want to actually make contact with that. So as you can see on the voltmeter, it's showing that there's no contact. So that's telling me that the cylinder inside is not shorting out to the inside of the interface which means everything is actually perpendicular and separated correctly. So that's one way of testing before you start your system. So the whole reason for that is so you, you know you make sure your whole fit up is done well and done right. And if for some reason you do get a short, then something is off. So you're gonna have to maneuver it around a little bit 
you know, left, right, up, down, you gotta take all your measures. So you don't want them to be offset because that's already gonna create a thermal short inside where the cryostat's gonna be touching. So you wanna make sure these are parallel to each other all the way around. So it's in, that's a critical uh, part of the installation. And all you gotta do is just take your time and make sure that it's set up correctly. Now we have the stand. We got the uh, forks tied in, and we also have the uh, interface bolted down to the uh, air table. Uh, what I like to do now is uh, just go through hooking up the uh, supply and return on the cryostat, and then hooking up the run cord to get ready for uh, operation. So uh, all of them come with a dust cap on them. So you got to remove the dust cap. And then what you want to do is you want to inspect the air clips to make sure that you have this small face seal on there because if that is off and you go and put your connection on there from the hose, it's going to end up leaking in time and you're going to see a pressure drop in your compressor and then you're going to have contamination problems and you're going to have temperature problems. So I just want to make sure that, you know, this is cleaned out the area. I have a, a chem wipe right here, you know, which is lint free. So what I would do is, uh, you know, you just want to make sure that there's uh, nothing here after you take the dust caps off. You know, make sure it cleaned out well. The hoses come with a dust cap. So remove the dust cap, and then you just want to inspect the internals before you actually attach it to your cross. That makes sure there's no foreign, ma you know, material in there that may cause a problem when it's engaged onto the cross. That hand tight before you go ahead and use the spanner wrenches. So what you want to do is line it up correctly, get a couple turns on it. So once you have a couple turns on it, you know it's threaded on correctly. And then we supply um, a kit with each system. It consists of uh, three spanner wrenches. Now we're gonna go ahead and uh, just match up. They're color coded, so green to green. Um, once you have this uh, hand tightened, then just take the spanner wrench and you want to make sure you're going clockwise and then counterclockwise to remove it. Steady turning. You don't have to ratchet super quick because uh, you don't want to actually gall up the threads and then it'll just all of a sudden stop. Just a little quarter turn should take care of it. Uh, then what you want to do is uh, remove this cap. This is for your uh, your run cord that comes from your compressor. So you want to stick this on then. Got that all set up so now you're ready to uh, start the system. So what we're going to do next is we're going to charge and vent the uh, angular space of the that. So you guys know what to do as far as uh, how much gas you need to keep in the angular space and you need to keep maintain positive pressure. When you hook this system up, also you have to be aware of how far your compressor is from the cryostat. So you want to have that placed in a good spot, but also it comes on wheels but you could also put vibration dampeners underneath the wheels to help isolate some of the ice, you know, vibration coming from the compressor. So I'd recommend that, you know, the further away your compressor is from your cryostat, the better. The other thing is what you want to do is the flex lines that we use to connect to the air clips. Um, you want to make sure that one, you know, you could fasten them between the compressor and the cryostat, you could have them hanging from the ceiling. Uh, you could actually make some kind of a support stand with some stock clamps that will help on your vibration coming from your flex lines. The other thing what you can do is you could take a five gallon bucket, fill it up with cement, make a T, you know, and use some stock clamps, which uh, it's something that we do supply. And uh, that will help mount your flex lines to cut back on your vibration from the flex lines to the cross that. 
So that's another option you could do to help isolate vibrations coming from your compressor and your hoses. What we're going to do next is we're going to actually charge and vent the bellows in between the interface and the cross that. So normally this is how it's set up. You have a uh, you know one PSI relief valve and then this will be your, your helium gas going into the annular space. So it's a quarter inch compression fitting. So normally like in this case you know it's a kind of a tight fit in between the forks. So you just got to take an adjustable wrench Break that connection. You can angle this up easily. You can install your uh, feed line for the helium gas. You want to tighten that down, snug it down. Go back. You could reposition this. You could put it this way, it's fine, or in this direction, whichever works best. Then, what you want to do is re tighten that down. Make sure you got a nice, snug fit. Now, if you guys have um, Snoop Liquid Snoop available, which uh, company by the name of Swage Lock, they actually sell Liquid Snoop, so you can make sure you don't have any leaks in here when you're purging your gas to charge and vent the bellows. And also, you could run some Liquid Snoop around the seams of the bellows to make sure that you don't have a large amount of gas escaping because what you want to do is prevent as much gas from escaping so that you don't end up using too much consumption of your helium and it'll last a lot longer. There's a valve back here. Uh, what we do there is we actually close it and then you're going to charge your gas through here into the bellows and then on the bottom where the relief valve is, it's a poppet. So if you pull it the gas will come out but if you put your thumb on it and close it it'll expand your bellows so that's what you want to do you want to put like maybe your regulator set for like maybe two three four psi hold that shut close your valve the valve will expand and then you want to relieve the pressure you want to open this valve close it open this valve about five times and then when you close it you're going to go back to your, you're going to have positive pressure still coming out of your relief valve. You want to go back to your regulator on the cylinder and actually adjust that for less than one PSI. Now, a lot of regulators, it's difficult to uh, do that. So what I recommend, if you throttle it or use a needle valve on your regulator, you can control the flow better. And then what you can do is control your flow with the regulator just that it barely pops this poppet valve so you have a little bit of helium coming out of it then you just back off on your regulator till you don't feel any more helium coming out uh, if you have liquid snoop you could use that and it'll form like you see a small bubble come up and then just back off on your gas but you want to maintain positive pressure the whole time this thing is running so this thing you want you don't want to escape the gas and have no gas in the annular space of the cryostat because what you're doing is with the gas inside the annular space you're actually cooling down the cold head at the tip through convection so this way there it's actually cooled by the gas and not thermally anchored so if you don't have any gas in it, you're going to get a way high temperature. You're going to end up getting moisture inside and contaminate the whole inside of your annular space. So this is critical that you know you got to try to maintain the pressure properly in the bellows for this to get for vibration isolation and then also not to use as much helium. But you must maintain positive pressure from 1 to the 5 Pressure. So we recommend 5 9 helium gas. Uh, not everybody has that, but if whatever you have, if you use 3 9s or 4 9s, what I'd recommend on the first cool down, just leave a little bit of positive pressure that lifts the relief valve, just slightly, so when it goes down there, it doesn't condense quickly and then create a vacuum in the annular space. Once you get down below eh, 20 Kelvin, 
then back off on your regulator again to make sure there's no pressure coming out of your relief valve but you have enough pressure in your bellows to maintain a positive pressure and then let it set like that make sure this valve is closed all the way and then that will maintain your temperature that will give you good stability for vibration and also good conduction of the gas when you charge and vent this that doesn't mean that this is empty when you're done you want to keep a positive helium pressure in the annular space which is critical for your vibration for your temperature and also for keeping the annular space clean from contaminants the other thing when you're not using the system I recommend that you disconnect this and actually if you have uh, some um, N2 nitrogen uh, gas that you actually purge out your annular space and make sure that stays dry because what you don't want to do is finish your testing shut the system off evacuate the gas from your annular space and then the cold head is going to get cold and pick up on condensation all that's going to drip down into the cold tip of your interface and then now you're going to get oxidation and oxidation is going to cause problems with temperature so it's very important that you keep everything clean and dry so um, the other thing is for maintenance after I'd say maybe 20 cycles you, you might want to take the cryostat out of the annular space inspect it and then you can go in there and clean it with uh, isopropanol 3M has a um, like a scouring pad you could go in there and clean the copper to a brighter finish to get all the oxidation off that may occur after running it so many times and not drying it out properly uh, I think that will be beneficial to maintain the system so you get the best temperature and I think it'll work uh, a lot better now we're going to remove the, the run cord and the flex lines. So now you, what you want to do is use two wrenches because now you're going to go counterclockwise. You want to use the the eighth and an inch. You want to actually hold it at this position while you take off the air clip. And the reason you want to do that, you don't want to end up turning this air clip because there's an O-ring seal inside here that'll actually escape all the gas from the system. So you don't want to break that seal. And plus here this also is threaded into the housing which is locked tight in but again if you are just using one wrench and turning this thing off you will loosen one of these connections up and lose all your gas and then you have to do a gas cleanup and then you got another problem so just take the other wrench put it on this thread and then actually unscrew And when you get to that point, you can just hand loosen it, and that's all you have to do. And we're going to do the same thing for this one. I just want to show you this is the cross that that is mounted from this point, square flange or round flange, and then goes inside the interface. So you have two separate components. So this is your second stage, your first stage, and then we have a, uh, uh, a radiator mounted to this top, and then that's what creates your uh, conviction loop. Normally, if there's a problem with your crest, that you don't have to send this whole thing back unless you have a vacuum leak or something like that. Uh, a lot of times it might just be after eight to ten thousand hour time for a um, seal replacement and. Um, maintenance so what you could do is just disconnect the bellows down below pull the whole head comes right out and it'll look like this you could send this back for uh, repair and even if you had another another cross that you could just put it right back in keep everything fixed and continue to test the other thing you could do too is uh, we sell maintenance kits with the proper training you could actually just remove these bolts pull the motor out pull out your displacer put the displacer back in you probably have to put your shipping plug you know spacers back in 
drop the displacer. We do have training at our facility for people that are interested in coming for uh, some uh, training in the maintenance of the cryostats. So look at our website and uh, call our service department and we could set something up for you. That'll uh, end our uh, discussion of uh, mounting the DMX 20 OM to a uh, air table. And thanks for watching and we'll be talking to you later.